You see in Africa at night, the stars will dazzle you. Stare long enough and the veins on the back of your eyelids glow neon red, so that when you blink it's cooler than the light speed scenes in Star Wars, man. It's incredibly beautiful out here. This huge arc of millions of stars and galaxies and possibilities. You just gotta breathe it all in and ride the wave. Grass tickles my ears. Windless bumps on my skin. I take my wife Liesel's hand and soak up her warmth through my palm. We spread our arms and let a warm wind fill our sails. We're kites now, drifting as one out and out and out. Out here, man, we really start to dream. Sometimes the stars dance, literally, man. They'll shimmer and shake and shimmy and bounce, all that funky stuff. They'll dim till they wink out altogether, and then bam, reappear somewhere else, brighter and more brilliant than before. Sometimes they'll even fall, and man, that is the best. You have to ask them to, but I don't think they mind doing it. I mean, the stars got to shine, right? Ask nicely enough, and one will just tip off the edge of nothing. And tumble down, catching others in its wake till three, five, ten, twenty of them are all pouring down straight through you like a fucking shining waterfall of fire and light, man. Oh, it's insanely pleasurable. Billions of suns charging through your body, your brain, and, and more, right through your mind's eye. It's like star rain. Right into your fucking dreams. You're off your face, bro. Dave's looking super cool as always. He's decked out in a brown fur coat that gives him a royal air. He's laying there like a hippie King Henry VIII on a tree stump shades long. He's teamed the coat with a trilby that shipwrecked in dirty dreads. And the beard means there ain't much humour left to see poking out of the post-festival come down costume. I mean, look, I admire Dave's fashion sense, yeah. But I could never pull that shit off myself. But it's only because he's so good looking already that he can. I'll tell him so and he grins and punches me on the arm. I punch him back, and in seconds we play fighting like we're back at school. We tumble in the dirt, I try to sweep his legs, he dives on top of me. We wrestle our way through the long grass, till we're caked in dry red soil, laughter and love. You're a man, Dave. I think out loud. I try to find Liesel's hand, but come up empty. Yeah, it's cool though. The stars are still dancing, and Dave's still the man. Hey, yo, Dave. It is amazing, isn't it? The way the stars will fall if you ask them to. He's in full fisheye view now. A warped reflection on a bowling ball. Yeah, man, he says. Fucking aces. Aces? Yeah, aces, man. You know, diamonds. Cards falling from heaven, yo. What, like it's all a card game? Yeah. Yeah, like even reality is a card game. Okay, like a space card game. Yeah, man. Fucking it. <laughs> All our acid conversations are like this. I mean, look, sure, they're inane, but they revolve in perfect little circles too. And that's why they feel so wise at the time and why I remember them afterwards, even if they are much less profound then. They're like songs, or better, limericks. It's the rhythm we love. That simple corner response that ends a conversation the same way every time. Fucking A, fucking aces, man. Just makes it all fall right, you know? The circularity gives it them truth feels. Dawn breaks. Shapes appear silhouetted along the tree line before dropping to the clearing below where we made our camp. Starlight picks them out as short and squat mini dates, fur coats and all. I think they're dancing. My tent's moving. And it's out of shape and at first it's an animal curled over but I stare a full three seconds and blink hard till my eyes focus enough to see that something is rooting around inside. Another two seconds to remember that all our stuff's in there like food, our beer, our stash all packed into the cool pubs. I said, Liesel, Liesel, shit, something's in our tent, babe. And then I notice that my hand is cold. Dave, 
Dave, where's Liesl? Is there her in the tent? He snorts, maybe, mate. Can't really tell from here. Tell you what, though, squinting. That looks like a wicked pie, did not it? Come on, let's go hang with those guys. And he rolls forward on his haunches, stands up real short next to me, wrenches me to my feet. It hurts my shoulder. I go, all right, man, take it easy, bro. I ain't a kid no more. We don't laugh or grin or nothing. He just says, come on, Sven, let's go. Liesl's voice is a tiny moth, buffeted by wind and at the end of a long tunnel that's so far away I can't catch its place or meaning. Dave yanks me forward, and the scene before me grows clearer with each step. There's the guys, in full flow, man. Like they're dancing, but they're leaping and bashing into each other, mosh pit style, and it'd be fun if I could hear any music. It's what really drops ice in my belly. There's no music at all. Just the insects humming and the frogs croaking. But the guys are losing it as though rage are making a comeback right there and then. I mean, it's violent, man. You ain't really like the guys at all. Come on, Sven. It's got to be wicked, says Dave. Bumps hard into my thigh. It's like he's trying to intimidate me. And that ain't like Dave at all either. He lets me go and leaps onto the dance floor, whooping like a fake Hollywood Apache. And Liesl's moth voice flutters over my eardrum. And I finally catch a word. She says, babe, babe, don't go in there. I feel the old warmth return to my hand and squeeze it to reassure her. It's okay, babe. It's cool. Rage, you're making a comeback, look. She squeezes back tight enough to hurt. Please, Sven, back away with me slowly. No sudden movements. And I turn to see my wife standing in a groovy 60s karate chick pose, holding a bamboo camping candle in her free hand. It's a shame she's not rocking a 60s leather jumpsuit too. So you're being awful weird, love. And then over my shoulder to the guys. What's our problem? And the party splits in uproar at my boys in joke. But not Dave. Dave just stands there, shoots Liesl a narrow-eyed groan. He says, dude, you suck. And then to me, where well, are you going to go anyway, man? It's party time, bruv. Let's go. So now I'm offended. And I go, dude, you suck. And suddenly, he advances on me. With the guy is fanning out behind him to flank him. So I step forward and put my hands on his shoulder and say, dude, take it easy, man. And just like every other time I've got Dave for a bad trip, I close my eyes and touch my forehead to his. I say, come on, man, you know how it is. I've got to go when the missus calls, isn't it? In a great party, thanks for everything. I'll catch you soon. Big love, bro. And I lift my fist to bump with his and open my eyes. The baboon inches from my face, lifts a paw and fist bumps me back hard. It hisses in my face, yeah right man, big love bro, and its breath makes me gag. Liesl crushes my fingers as lips peel back over massive canines and powerful muscles cord along its neck. She whispers, please Sven, that isn't Dave. Dave's been gone for years, baby. And I remember then. I remember my best mate, Dave. You know, Dave at school, Dave at college, Dave at party, and Dave ill, and Dave dead. Man, I, I really love that guy. It's weird that he'd come and visit me out here tonight in the bush. Still, right now, Dave is calling himself for a pounce. And although it's still half him, it's half not either. I've seen baboons pounce before, man. They are fast and strong and deadly as fuck. Shit, babe, I stammer as we edge back. Me hiding on Liesl's shoulder as she shields us with the candle like a fucking Viking warrior woman. That was your trilby you was wearing. Love that hat. The mob won't get too close to a fire stick, but it won't let the distance increase either. It inches forward ebbing and rising as they clamber up and over each other, claws dragging at jaws and lips distorting faces so they melt into one huge hairy mass with dozens of fangs skewing off at obscene angles. 
Time slows. Senses heighten. Blood rushes past my ears, but I can still hear Liesel trying to calm him down with a school teacher tone of voice. In another harsher tone, she yells at me, get in a fucking cab. And as I turn to do so, I bump against the bonnet and let out a yelp. Liesel flinches and the troops surge forward so fast it's like I'm pausing a DVD. We scramble around the cab and yank the doors. Liesel tosses the fire stick at them as they swarm up and over the bonnet and onto the worn calico roof, scratching and tearing and biting and bashing at anything they can get a tooth or a fingernail under. We hunker down in the footwells. Liesel scrabbles keys at the ignition. The little jeep rocks and I look up to see the window on my side being hauled at by six thick fingered hands. It's coming down! I yell like a 80s horror queen. It's not a car already! And just as Dave Baboon's snout edges over the lip of the window pane, she does, and the engine turns mercifully over. <sighs> the horn on this jeep is one of those horrible aftermarket jobs that Wazoo owned it before us had added. This geezer seemed to think that the Muppet Show theme tune would be a respectable noise for a car to make. Even worse, over time, it's lost power. And now the sound is so distorted, it sounds like Kermit the Frog is being waterboarded. I mean, it's truly horrible, man. And that is the sound that slices through the night air. The guys all leap at once, paws clapped over their ears as the Muppets drown in stereo and most missing their landings. I hear thuds and angry barks as their bulk dents the earth around us. Liesel throws us in reverse. Wheels spin, dust sparkles up in the headlights and we lurch backwards. I slide up the seat back to watch the guys losing their shit through a cloud of twinkling copper dust. And they're really beautiful, man. Like, just totally ferocious and pure. They howl and bray and leap and gorge in our cool box. It's a total Tasmanian devil feeding frenzy, man. Our food, our beer, our stash, all gone in a handful of hoot-filled seconds. They're doing our acid, babe. Do you think they'll be okay? Side-eyed, she shunts us into first and spins the wheel. I think they'll bloody evolve. The engine roars, and we gun it out of there. The baboon show shrinks in the rear view, while the windscreen fills with now fading but still beautiful stars. But although I ask them again and again, they won't rain anymore. I guess it's morning. And we're going home.